have seven o'clock. That's the new ones. Okay. You would take your seats. Okay, call this meeting of the uh, County Commission work session to order. Um, that a good crowd tonight? Let's see, two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Just about everybody here. That's that's pretty cool. Appreciate y'all being here tonight. Uh, have down to for Monday night. Uh, our invocation by Mr. Bubba Gregory. You okay with that? And pledge by Mr. Richard Johnson. Okay. And we'll do our roll call and by electronic vote and check in that way. Um, approve the minutes for the February 28th commission meeting. They've been distributed. Has anybody noticed anything in those that uh, needs to be corrected before next Monday night? Okay. If you do, please let Miss Amy know. Um, announcements right now, I don't know of anything other than the deadline on getting your petitions if you plan to run is uh, noon, April 7th. Uh, if you haven't done that, or you trying to encourage someone or trying to strong arm someone, uh, you got a little bit of time left to do that. Um, Mayor, did you have any announcements we need to cover tonight? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Anyone else, commissioners, y'all have any announcements you'd like to make? Anybody have a grandbaby or birthday or anniversary or anything like that? Today your birthday? No? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, you know, don't know unless you ask. All right. Um, of course, we'll cover any amendments that need to be done and approve our agenda Monday night. Um, citizens response, of course, we'll ask citizens to sign in if they would like to speak to any of the agenda items. And mayor's report. Mayor, anything you want to fill us in on tonight? Uh, there's nothing pressing, uh, and there's a couple items I'm waiting to develop for next week, so I'll just give them a report on Monday night. Okay, thank you. Committee reports. These are the committees that we have that have met. If I missed any, please let me know. Steering Committee met March 10th. Parks and Rec met March 3rd. Veteran Services met March 15th. Did not have a quorum. Is that correct? Uh, I think we're going to try to replace some people on there that are not coming to those meetings so that we can try to continue with them. Um, I will just make a point, just a brief point. You can have a committee meeting without a quorum. You just can't vote on anything or come to any decisions but you can meet amongst yourself to have discussion if you want to while you're there. Just wanted to throw that one out there. Budget finance met March 17th and earlier tonight, March 21st. Audit will meet at six o'clock prior to our meeting Monday night. Are there any other committee reports, anything I overlooked? Okay. Um, Active business, we have uh, a few appointments. Uh, Board of Equalization, do we have a name on that one? Or are they reappointments? I don't remember, I'm sorry. Uh, Who? David Baldwin. Okay, David Baldwin, okay, is being reappointed to the Board of Equalization? No, he's being, As his, he's being appointed to the Board of Equalization, okay. And he was a... He is replacing Mr. Butts? Yes. Okay. okay. Resale of land committee, we needed to appoint Mr. Clarity to that. Uh, Ms. Johnson had served in that capacity 
and um, he seemed to be most familiar with land and land prices and things of this nature because of all the auctions that he works. So that was uh, basically why came up with that name. Um, we, I will also try to have some fresh appointments on Veteran Services Committee. Uh, we've talked about some people and we want to uh, make sure that we contact them and they're okay with it. Mr. Walsh? I'm just waiting for a return phone calls from two of the three I've talked to or okay. try to talk to. Okay. As soon as we hear, hopefully we'll be able to do that at Monday night's meeting. Certainly, if anyone has any interest in that, please let Mr. Walsh know. Um, or someone that you'd like to recommend for that. Um, I think it's not the resale of lane committee, it's the resale of land committee uh, on your agenda there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Clarity. All right, then we get into resolutions. Um, our first resolution is 2022-06750. Um, this is a resolution authorized application execution of funding from the State of Tennessee Department of Economic Amendment Development Office. This is the block grant program. Um, this is to uh, authorize I guess the mayor to enter in to make application for this grant. Is that correct? Yes, sir. This is a, I had, I believe it was last week, had a um, public meeting that was required to apply for the group, this uh, community development block grant. And uh, I was the only one there, but we streamed it live. And uh, I did have on the phone the grant administrator that have helped us in the past and we kind of covered the eligible projects and her opinion was the only one that she thinks would be somewhat scoring eligible score well and be eligible is for a housing um, it's like a housing renovation fund and for the area of the county we picked it would be Foxall, Gregory, Hall, Morrison, uh, Greentop and that kind of area because they're have to be a certain income level and has to be a certain population density. So when we looked at the map, she thought that was probably the area of the county that would score the best. So that's what we're gonna apply for is that housing rehabilitation fund and for that area right there. I know this is something that we, we get questions about from time to time is why are these grants seem like they're always only available to the people in, in the city and not people out in the county. And the, the answer to that he just gave was population density. And uh, whether I think it's fair, you think it's fair, federal government thinks it's fair, or the state of Tennessee thinks it's fair. So that's part of the parameters. So if anyone asks you that, that's the short, short answer to that. It's, it has to do with population density. Okay. Any questions on that one? Next is resolution 2022-07751. Uh, this is the resolution that has to do with the retroactive pay um, that we're using the ARPA funds uh, for that. Is that correct, Mayor? Uh, no, sir. What this is, is this would prohibit the practice of giving retroactive pay to employees oh. that say, if you want to give them a raise, you I'm can't sorry. make it retroactive for two or three months before. Uh, which has been kind of the practice that has been done in the past. It came up recently, um, uh, reached out to Mr. Beller. He looked at it, given this is what we had done in the past, we couldn't prevent it in this situation that came up recently. However, he strongly suggested we pass a policy to prohibit that going forward. So this is what this is. This will put this in the, amend the personnel policy to, to basically prohibit retroactive pay. So everything going forward to be you be paid on the next payroll after that uh, pay raise is submitted. I remember now, I'm sorry. I got ahead of myself. Any questions on that one? Okay. All right, that's it on revolutions. We'll get into ordinances. Um, first reading ordinances, uh, 236-2020-06. 
This is rezoning a parcel of land from A1 to R1 on Templo Road. Uh, this is a track of land, I believe consists of 57 acres, 57 acres, has uh, quite a bit of road frontage and they're wanting to uh, develop this into uh, residential tracks. Uh, this did come from from planning for from planning commission. And um, any questions on that one? Got the map there in front of you. What it is, what they're wanting to do. I think this was originally sold off of Mr. Coker's property, if I remember correctly, a few years back. And uh, the limiting thing on this probably will be septic fields and uh, water availability, things of those natures. Uh, just give them a little bit more design flexibility in the lots and positioning houses and things if they go to R1 instead of A1. Any questions on that one? Okay. Our next one is um, public hearing and second reading on uh, ordinance 235 2022-05. This is rezoning a parcel of land from uh, R1 to R3. Uh, Still a res residential designation, just a higher density designation, which would allow for multi-family units to be built. This is down on West Main, the other side of the um, highway department health before you get down to the housing authority uh, buildings right along in that, that, that area, just past right lane. Any questions on that one? Okay. okay. I think that takes care of our ordinances. Get into budget amendments. We will put together a new um, agenda for Monday night to reflect the ones that were done the last hour uh, so that we have those on there. But I do want to uh, try to go over those if I don't miss something. Uh, the first one we have is in the 101 general fund. This is the ARPA bonus uh, pay. And coming out of the 101 fund, this would be 240,000 and some change. Um, that's appropriation 2022-101-33. All of these we're gonna talk about did uh, come through budget and finance with a favorable recommendation. Don't think there was anything that didn't receive a favorable recommendation to move it forward. So we have that one also coming out of 101, um, some repairs to the playground equipment at Trey Park. There's several pieces that uh, Rust has finally took its toll on after many, many years of uh, use and abuse. And uh, this should get all of the equipment back up into a good, good stead down there. That one's 22-101-34 in the amount of 36-611. Any questions on that one? Next one is 2022-101-35 uh, FB. This is a fund balance draw um, to for the emergency increase funding for the sheriff's department employees. Uh, the amount coming out of the uh, 101 fund amounts to 49,571. You also have 6,898 that will come out of your 111 fund in your very next uh, budget amendment. Okay, any questions on that? This is a response to emergency situation, we feel like, and the sheriff has agreed and his idea that any uh, increases that they would have been getting in the next budget, that this amount can be deducted from that. 
are taken into consideration on what they would receive uh, going forward. Any questions on those? Okay. Next, 118 ambulance service. This is much the same thing, EMS pay increase. Uh, emergency funding to increase the uh, ambulance service pay. I believe it was a dollar an hour, if I remember correctly. That's an amount of $32,690. Any questions on that one? Okay. Uh, 118 ambulance services. This is the EMS pay increase. The amount that's coming out of 118. And that is the fund balance draw. Highways, uh, this is the bonus pay for highway to employees. That's the amount of uh, 52,198. Coming out of the ARPA funds, as previously discussed. And general purpose school funding, uh, the 141 account, 20, 22, 141, This is their strategic compensation bonus plan. Uh, this is them moving money within their budget to the line items that they need to, to allocate it out at the end of the year. Uh, that's when they plan to pay their bonuses to their people uh, with certain, uh, meeting certain criteria. So this is taking that money, putting it in the right category. This is not coming out of our fund balance. This is strictly coming out of their funding. Any questions on that one? Okay. Uh, next, 2022, 141.10. These two came over from school board last Friday. Uh, the first one is what the ARPA bonus is for the non-certified personnel. These both have to do with that. Any questions on that? Okay, everybody understands. All right. Um, you did have a, sh we had a sheet for budget finance. Do we have that for them on the total of the bonuses? No. Okay. We can get you one if you want to know what that total was for all the departments. Um, just for kicks, 523-111-72. That's highway, water, schools, our personnel, everybody coming out of 523-111-72 cents. Yeah, you've got, you should have that sheet from budget finance, Jerry. But uh, just for those that weren't here the last hour, I thought we'd throw that figure at you. Um, let's see. I believe that takes care of all of our budget amendments. Is that right, Amy? Did I miss anything? Okay. Okay. And then um, ambulance uh, was approved last hour by budget finance to spend ARPA money for uh, the much needed new ambulance that we were sweating bullets for a long time trying to figure out how we were going to find the money to buy. Uh, now we uh, have it and uh, looking to make that budget item $360,000 out of those funds, which we've talked about and uh, somewhat plan to do. It's a little bit more than what the um, um, total bid amount is, I think 341. They feel like there may be some sundry things that get thrown at us rather have too much so we don't have to come back with small budget amendments to, to cover any increases. Certainly if it's not spent, spent it's still in that fund, so. It just uh, try to kind of uh, cover our minds. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any questions on that one? Why we're doing that that way? Or anybody that has a better idea? Seeing none. Uh, pilot program. Uh, 
This was uh, looked at in steering, looked at budget and finance. Uh, Going to be sent forward to the to the full body. We'll get you that information if you don't have it. Basically, this is a um, program um, to defer property taxes for new industries coming into the county. If they meet certain criteria, certain number of jobs, level of investment, things of that nature, and uh, have an approving document. Uh, what we will be doing is approving the framework for that. We'll be setting it up so that the Industrial Development Board and the Budget and Finance Committee will make the final decision on doing this or not doing this based on the pre-approved initial framework that we're, we're giving you. And um, a lot of people have worked a long time in putting this together. It's something that's sorely needed if we're serious about trying to attract and recruit industry into our community. 60 out of the 90 counties have this in some form or another. So certainly if you have questions about it, please ask myself, ask the mayor, ask Mr. King as uh, chairman of the Industrial Development Board. Uh, Elliot Benson helped us put this together with uh, Senator Rochelle's law firm. Uh, uh, been over for months and uh, but if you see something in there that you have a question about or you have concerns about, please let us know. But we will go ahead and move that on to next Monday night's uh, business. Seemed to be what everybody in budget and finance wanted to do. Uh, commissioners, do y'all have anything that uh, you see that overlooked or that we need to try to take up going into Monday night's meeting? Public comments, Mr. Ford? Question. Yes, sir. How much ARPA funds do we have left that is not already spent or approved to be spent? I can't answer that. Mayor, roughly just a rough amount, exact or rough amount? Rough amount. 50 cents. Somewhere between two and a half to three million. And I would say a million of that is we need to reserve because if we use um, that ARPA funds to do water and sewer projects with the TDEC grants, we'll get 5% off our match requirement. We, we haven't spent it all, but we're working on Okay, public comments. Anyone in the public like to say anything? Seeing none? No, there is. Sir? Public comment. Or okay. Other business. It's directed towards the mayor. Oh. Is it my understanding that county employees don't have longevity pay? Is that correct? And if so, I got two follow-up questions. Uh, the only ones who currently have longevity pay were the sheriff's department. I believe that was put in place in 2018. Um, what would be the rationale behind that? And is that something we can look at in the budget hearings to see if we can place that? We always talk about taking care of our employees. And we got the high turnover with something like that, possibly retain more employees here if we had a longevity pay up to like 10 steps or basically to research that during our budget hearings, would there be money somewhere in the county that we could do that? Well, the proposed pay scale that came out of the compensation study had every year, if you do a step increase, it was 2.35% increase over five years, you'd get 11 and three quarter percent increase, I believe. So that was kind of built into the compensation study was a, year over year increase. And that would work differently than the Sheriff's Department's longevity, which right now I believe you get your first longevity increase after two years. And I believe after that, the next one is five years. Whereas under the compensation study, there's potential, if you get if you meet performance goals, there's a potential to get an increase every year. It's not an automatic, it would be, but it's built into the formula and it's subject to the funding being available. But that does address that need, or that's part of the rationale. So I would give that person been here 10 years more than somebody been here one or two then. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Good question, thank you, Mr. Walsh. Anyone else have anything for the body? Well, hope to see everybody back next Monday night and uh, 
if like I say, there's several things on here that are, are complicated. And if you have, don't, don't be shy. You are permitted to pick up the phone and call and get information. Okay. So please, please know that you can do that. Mr. Walsh. Motion to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. Ms. Jones gets a second. She's fast on the trigger. All in favor, say aye. Say goodbye.